Hello, it's Jeff with Bounty Hunter Energy Projects again. I want to show you what we're working on. Um, to start with, uh, somebody who sees all these batteries might assume that the person doing all this knows something about batteries. Well, I don't really know a whole lot about batteries, but I know that they uh, hold a charge and you want to keep them up off the cement. Um, I do know that if you take two 12 volt 7 amp hour batteries, that's what we have here, two 12 volt batteries, and if you put those batteries in what's called series by hooking the positive of one battery up to the negative of another battery, you now double the voltage of the two batteries. So we'll take a little meter reading here. <clears throat> we'll look at what the two batteries read. This one reads 12.56 volts. This one reads 11.45 uh, volts. If I hook the negative of one battery up to the positive of another battery and then use the positive and the negative terminals between the two batteries, we now show 24.0 volts. Okay. All right. You can do the same thing with capacitors. A little disclaimer here. If you mess with capacitors, you do so on your own will. You do so of your own volition. Uh, I don't re assume any responsibility for anybody who hurts themselves with capacitors. You can burn the crap out of yourselves with capacitors. These are 50 volt capacitors each. What I've done is put them in series parallel, series parallel. And you can charge this bank, little bank of capacitors up to 150 volts, somewhere in that neighborhood. Okay. This is a, one of our coils. I'm going to show you a little something about these. Um, I've shown a little bit of these on my previous videos. But if you look at the strands here, we've got five strands of magnetic wire, magnet wire they call it, uh, used for coil winding. Each strand has got, um, I want to say an enamel, I could be wrong about that. It's, it's a coating that prevents the wires from shorting together when you twist them up and wrap them around the, the coil. So each end that you burn off the coating has got a copper connection on it and you get it out the other end. So what we do is we take five strands of wire, twist it up in what's called a lit style. When you take five strand, when you take any number of strands, twist them up uh, to use in the winding of a coil. It's, uh, they call it lit's winding. And we just started at one end, wrapped it around, 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 all the way to the other end, all the way back, all the way back, all the way back, all the way back. Each revolution around the core. Um, which is just the core of a spool. If you take the, if you get a spool wiring, a uh, plastic spool, and you take all the wire off, you're left with a spool. Um, each wrap around is what they refer to as a turn. This coil has approximately 250 turns. I accidentally lost count and didn't want to start over. So, anyway, then all this is is just tape taping over to hold the wires in place so they don't want to loosen up and whatever. It just holds the wires onto the spool. This is just a spool of. Uh, five stranded magnet wire wrapped around 250 turns back and forth as, as much as you can hold on a spool. Uh, okay, now on a spool wire, you got a little hole that goes through the spool, uh, and that's our core. Okay, and what we have in the core, it's very hard to tell, but I'll show you this in here. These are little strips of welding wire that have been cut. I'll show you a few of those. And we're not perfect <laughs> by any means, and I want to get better and better as we go here. But this is just little pieces of magnet wire. It comes in like three foot, four foot sections, and you cut it up with a grinder or with a chop saw or whatever. Now the interesting prop, the interesting thing about these um, little pieces here is that we've coated each one individually. Okay, so that theoretically, if you put them together that you don't get a short between this one and that one. Okay, if you got bare copper, it's gonna have it, they're all gonna be shorted together. Um, from what I understand, having these rods in, uh, coated, like the magnet wire is coated to prevent the wires from shorting, it helps break down the magnetic field 
from what I, I, I don't understand that completely yet. But that's the way I was told to do it, so that's the way I did it. So this is your core. When the coil is uh, gets voltage applied to it, the core uh, magnetizes or with a with a pole and will either repel or attract the pole of a magnet. Okay, so there's there's that. You want to show us where that's installed? Yeah. On the on the new wheel, this is the same exact thing. This is a coil, five strands coming out one side, five strands coming out the other. Each strand, uh, one on the end and one on the out, will short together on the ends because it's the same wire. Okay. On the coil, uh, the one side of the coil, the five strands coming out, are uh, shorted together. You burn off the coating and short them all together. That's common, okay? Because they have they have a common purpose. They have a common place they go. Um, that goes in there. I'll have to screw that down. The other side goes through the circuitry to these to these through these uh, diodes and resistors to the transistors. Transistor basically acts as a timing switch. When a certain condition happens, the switch in the transistor opens up. A certain condition happens, the switch closes. So this is just basically a switching system. Um, what we're trying to do, and I, I've seen it on a scope, I don't have a scope here, unfortunately, but when we have the wheel running, we're getting voltage spikes well over 200 volts on the scope. You, they're very short, very sharp, and you can see them on this scope. You get lots of them. Uh, big, nasty spikes, which, uh, by the way, will fry uh, solid state components very easily. So. Uh, you want to be careful with that too. Uh, but what we're doing with the switching circuits is we're trying to capture that large, uh, John Bedini calls them radiant spikes, uh, radiant energy. We're trying to capture those, those giant spikes and send them to our batteries. Um, I'm just going to put this back where it belongs here. Came out of its holder. All right, I want to talk about just something a little, uh, real, real quick here. Um, in my earlier videos, you can see a big car bulb here that was in this hole, and uh, the var resistor or the variable resistor um, would go through that car bulb, and I never would get that car bulb to light. And from watching other videos and uh, paying attention, uh, it seemed that it was important that that light would light. And I, if I turn this around. I've taken the car bulb out and I've used a smaller, um, a smaller bulb, uh, and this one actually lights. A flashlight bulb. Uh, it's a this is a 14 volt lamp is all it is, uh, but it's got a smaller milliamp draw uh, than the than the car bulb did. So um, there's something to that. I don't I don't understand that 100 percent yet either. Well, let's get to the fun stuff. Okay, we're gonna look at two different sets of batteries. This is a 12 volt, 7 amp hour battery. Okay, just a regular sealed lead acid battery. These are the same exact thing 12 volt, 7 amp hour, 12 volt, 7 amp hour, all the way around. What I've done here is I've series two, ba series two batteries together to get 24 volts, and I series a second set of batteries to get 24 volts. And then I series those batteries together to get 48 volts, and did the same with another bank. Uh, four to get 48 volts. Then I series those two together. They should be able to do 96 volts. Uh, we basically made a 96 volt battery here. Okay. Be be real careful messing with batteries. You, if you choose to do that, you, again, you do this on your own will because the batteries do weird things, and when they blow up or explode or leak or or break, they they're very harmful. So be very careful with whatever you're doing.